What's up, wrestling fans, trading card collectors? Welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Cards. If you go back in the archives of this channel, you can find a playlist of video series I started called Collector's Spotlight. And in those videos, I would take a card out of my personal collection and talk about why I like it so much. And maybe some features on the card that a lot of people weren't thinking of. I haven't done one of those in a while, but as I said, they are in the archives of this channel, so you can go back and watch those videos after this one. But in the past couple months, I've had some members of the Wrestling With Cards community reach out to me on social platforms or Patreon or on these videos in the comments and say, we wanna see more people's collections. We wanna see what they have and why they collect what they do. And I was like, yes, that's a fantastic idea. And then it got me thinking, hey, that's kinda of what I was already doing with Collector Spotlight. Let's just go ahead and resurrect that series and bring some people in. And our first guest in this series starts today. I'm joined by Joey Charles. Joey's a great member of the Wrestling Cards community, but also a member of the Wrestling With Cards Patreon community. And today he wanted to talk about the 2006-2007 WWE Chrome Heritage sets, which I'm also a big fan of these. But as always, before we get into the conversation with Joey, just a few reminders of how you can help show your support for my content and keep this stuff coming. The first thing you can do, and it's free, it's easy, hit that subscribe button. That's one of the best things you can do. Trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, that's always kind of been a milestone when I first started the channel. Let's get to 1,000, then what do we do after that? Let's get to 2,000, let's get to 3,000, and so on. And if you're liking these videos or my past videos, please give this video a like. Thumbs up. Make sure to check out the podcast I'm part of, Worlds Collide, myself and Tony Vela from WrestlingTradingCards.com. Each week we get together to talk about different types of topics or historic sets or whatever it is in wrestling cards. If you like wrestling cards, you're going to like that podcast. It's available on all popular podcast platforms, no matter what you listen on. So just search Worlds Collide Wrestling Card Podcast. I'm sure you'll find it. Hit subscribe so you never miss another episode. And hey, if you dig those, give us a five-star review. If you would like to help show your support monetarily to this content, keep the podcasts and the videos coming, make sure to check out Wrestling With Cards on Patreon. As little as $1 a month, you can get your name in the credits of these videos. There's also other tiers you can pay more for and get more. Exclusive videos, exclusive content. You can even come on the show every so often and just talk about whatever you want. Again, a lot of options there. You can also check out my eBay store. We've got cards as little as $1.50 shipped. We've got combo items where you can get discounts up to 30% if you order 10 items or more free shipping, and much, much more. Slabs, wrestling memorabilia, toys, you never know what's gonna be on there. It's a virtual flea market card show quarter box. All that stuff's in there. You can check me out on social media. Got all the platforms in the show notes of ways you can contact me, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Chances are, if you're on it, I'm probably on that platform as well. And of course, links to buy me a coffee if you so choose. Everything I've talked about, links in the show notes. But enough of that. Let's talk about these 2006-2007 Topps Chrome. There's a Chrome word in there. We're going to talk about that. Chrome Heritage set from WWE. What's up, everybody? We've got Mr. Joey Charles on the show. First time guest. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So good to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for, you know, seeing you kind of since day one, since I've been doing content and joining Twitter mainly. I've seen you on Twitter I've uh, seen, you know, you posting wrestling cards, talking about wrestling, showing up, I believe, on AEW with the WC Yeah, shirt. AEW Dark at Universal, front row, yeah. Yeah, excited to, to show off wrestling trading cards to, to the rest of the community. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some people, get some more eyes on our community. Should we actually give you the credit for being the one who put the AEW Upper Deck cards on the map with the correlation? No, no. <laughs> Well, uh, normally the first time when I have somebody on, it's for an interview and we kind of get their backstory. But per the request of many of the people that have reached out to me, they want to kind of take a deeper dive into some people's collections and why they do what they do. And something that I've seen that you were really passionate about is the 06, 07 Topps Heritage Chrome sets. And we're just going to get into that. So give us a little backstory on like how you got into these sets, what drove you to them, and then whatever information you'd like to talk about. And then I'll just kind of jump, we'll go back and forth as we're talking about these. 
Sure. Yeah. Background about myself. Like I actually started collecting those sets when they came out. So I grew up during the ruthless aggression era. So basically when I got good grades in school, uh, my dad would go out to Target and get me a retail box of the, the Topps Chrome cards. And I, I collected some of the Fleer that came out before Topps got the license before that. But the 2006 and seven Topps Chrome sets are ones that are really um, heavily collected in when, when I was younger. And Fast forward to today, I think the story kind of resonates with a lot of people. Um, in 2020, got nothing to do, kind of rummaging around old stuff, finding binders full of cards, and you go through it, and you're like, wow, this was cool. I remember this. And and pair that with all the sensation with Zion and Ja going on in the, the basketball world, you just kind of get this interest again in trading cards. So that's kind of how I got back into it. So I kind of stopped after... Um, collecting in 06, 07. I stopped watching wrestling there for a little bit, but got back into it maybe about like five years later. But 2020, yeah, COVID hit and just kind of boredom, seeing everybody else talk about Zion and John, discovering all my old wrestling and basketball cards just kind of got me, got me back in, got me back into it, got me hooked again. So um, had just a binder full of a lot of base of the 2006 and seven cards. And it was just cool to kind of go through and see, like, now that I have more of a understanding of, like, the parallels and what each card means, it's like, oh, wow, I had this card. Like, I had a super fractor that I didn't even know. I had all these X fractors that I, I didn't know. I probably didn't know at the time that they were valuable. I just thought they were cool, shiny cards. So it was kind of cool to go back and, and see um, – all those cards that, that I have and kind of use my knowledge of what's going on in the card world now um, yeah. to kind of understand and move forward. So after that, um, I was I kind of bought into more basketball cards. I didn't really know what I was doing still. I was kind of buying into that Zion and Ja Fomas, yeah. just kind of seeing what everybody else was hyped about. And I just kind of got onto that train. But um, after finding uh, resources like you, Tony, um, the card found pod stacking slabs Brett McGrath kind of seeing okay like collect what you like like ignore all the noise that's out there focus on what drives you what you you find interesting and I think with these 06 07 um, sets it's what really I really went back and it's like you know what there's a lot of nostalgia there for me I grew up sure. watching all these guys there is a great checklist in my opinion in both sets and I really thought the cards were still undervalued. Like these sets, I, I still PC. Um, I'm collecting the 07 extractors right now, but these are all PC cards, but I still think they're really undervalued. And I really um, think that they'll appreciate over time. So that's just kind of like my background is like what I'm doing and what how I've got to my journey where I'm at today. I think it's interesting that we're spe you know, specifically zeroing in on these two years of Chrome sets today. And I think it's interesting that a lot of people are finding these cards and they're like, oh, well, these are really early Chrome cards. And, you know, it's like a discovery process. But yet it's interesting that th these this is something that you're collecting, but it's also something that you actually started with back in the day, which is like, right. it's nostalgia, it's knowledge, and you're able to take that information and give it out to people. So what, it, obviously you started with these, talk a little bit about any kind of history about the set, what, why you're drawn to it. Um, obviously, cause it's something you started collecting. We've, we've got that far, but what is it about the images, the checklists, uh, whatever it is you want to talk about, like why you're interested in this set and why you're going deep into it. Yeah, so it's great you mentioned the history. A lot of people think the, the 2014 is the first uh, WWE Topps Chrome, but it's really the 2006. I know a lot of people are kind of turned off about the heritage part of it, but I really think yeah, that's it's, what that's it's what It's interesting that it. one word like drives people away. I don't understand. I, I do understand the differences. They'll say, well, 14 is the first year that had gold. Okay, yeah, maybe so. But like to say that the word heritage means it's not an official Topps Chrome product is like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Right. The, the Topps Chrome logo is still on all these cards. Yeah. So in my opinion, it, it counts. Yeah. But yeah, the, the history of it, um, I mean, being Heritage, it is going back to the baseball roots. Um, Topps, when they made baseball cards, most of these are back in the 50s. I think the, the 2006 base um, mirrors the 1956 image. Mm -hmm. The 2007 base mirrors the 1953 
the 2007 legends set in there. There's like a subset of just legends. They have different images. That is 1954. And the divas is actually night the, from the 1972 design. So I, it's really cool to see tops kind of go back with this series, not just in wrestling, but in like their regular baseball too, to make cards that, that look like vintage. Um, I think they're, it's just a really cool design. And especially in, in the Chrome stock, I think it really pops. One thing I've heard some actual baseball collectors say is maybe they got started on a more recent heritage set out of baseball and they like the design. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're going back and collecting that that design's original year and trying to put that set together. And, you know, for people who want to put sets together, which we're in a day and age where a lot of people don't, I think that's, you know, a different way to do things. So, um, you know, my hope is that maybe this heritage stuff if you want to go back and collect the baseball that you mentioned that parallels with that, that's a cool thing, but maybe it also could drive an interest back to just vintage wrestling and some of the older designs that a lot of people are not looking at right now. As far as the checklist goes, one thing that I hear a lot of people kind of, once again, this is strike two of this set. It's not official Chrome because it says heritage. Well, here's strike two is the rookie class and that, well, there's not a lot of big rookies in there. And my kind of rebuttal to that is, who needs rookies when it's loaded with all-star Hall of Famers? So talk a little bit about that and your opinions on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the 2006 um, actually does have a significant rookie in Lashley, but I do understand that people who gravitate towards rookies, how that could be a con against the set. But in terms of the checklist, it has like future Hall of Famers, current current superstars of the time, um, a, lot, a lot of legends that really don't get, get the love that they should in the, in the card community. But I mean, so one of the first cards that I actually pulled that I found in a binder that I got graded was this Brock X Fractor, such nice. a sweet card. One of the reasons I went and started with the 2007 versus the 2006, because like, say you're chasing a rainbow, it's easier mm -hmm. to start with the Super Fractor sure. and work your way down. So right. Rock is the, the cream of the crop when it comes to these sets. But honestly, like this is such a great checklist. You have Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H, CM Punk, Rey Mysterio, Undertaker, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Mr. Perfect, Paul Bearer, it's just the list goes on. And plus, I believe this is the only set that does this. The, the 2007 set has the entire McMahon family. The, the four, oh, you got gosh. Shane, Stephanie, Vince, and Linda. Linda I don't think the, there's any other yeah. set out there that has the four. Yeah, the, the well, only thing the only thing that would have made it awesome is if Transcendent wouldn't have included Linda McMahon, then we would have had it, right? But <laughs> yeah, that would have been there. But it's it's been close a few times with the three, but I think 2007 has all four. But but no, the, the checklist is super loaded. The 2007 has two Andre the Giants. So there is a turkey red turkey subset, red. Which, mm -hmm. yeah, which is another um, Topps baseball set product. Um, I actually have both of them right here: the Andre and an eight PSA eight beautiful card and then the Andre legends in a PSA nine. So I love I, those legends cards. There's something about the, the, I don't, just the way that they set the images up with the background of a solid color. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And like I said, that, that mirrors what, what it actually looked like in, in 1954, what tops did. So I think it's a cool homage and it's just a cool image too. So do you have a preference of the uh, 06 or 07, which one you, cause we're seeing, there's love for both sets from a lot of people out there for different reasons. Some people absolutely hate the horizontal layout and they got to go with the vertical. Meanwhile, they like some of the, you know, the, the verticals, it's just kind of the one image, whereas the horizontal ones in 06 have the kind of headshot with a smaller action shot, which I don't generally like action shots, but I thought that was kind of a cool thing when I first saw it. So do you have a preference or um, you kind of, what do you think is more popular? So the horizontal doesn't bother me. I think I think both designs look great. Um, actually, the the 2007 one does have an action shot as well. If you In see the lower the, part, the the lower part right there, yeah, that has an action shot, but it's it's very subtle. It doesn't take away anything from the card. But in terms of what I prefer, I think it just comes down to the checklist. The checklist is very similar. The one big difference that I see in a collector from a collector standpoint is the 06 has Hogan. And 07 has Andre. Well, two Andres if, if right. with the turkey red. But 
neither of them have both. So it's just kind of which, which one do you prefer? And I think I think you can't go wrong with either one. I like I like both sets just the same. So you you were talking about mainly the X fractors. What exactly is your plan with these? Are you just going for those? Are you trying to put rainbows together? Do you think that you're going to be like a lot of collectors where you start with something and it ends up just, you know, expanding out within that. What's your plan going forward with a set? I think right now I'm just kind of focused on finishing the, the X Factor set. I think I'm about a little over two thirds done with collecting the whole set. And then I eventually wow. want to get them all submitted to PSA. Um, fingers crossed for them to get the, the prices down because I love to, to fill out a set registry for these things. I actually have a set request out there with them and I use wrestlingtradingcards.com as a resource to kind of help that move along. But I think that's my ultimate goal is to get, get all of these graded, um, just kind of um, get better condition cards, upgrade where I can, but maybe go back to the 2006 X-Fractors when I'm done with this. But right now my focus is collect all of them, get them to PSA and get them in the set registry. That was my next question was how you're restoring them because a lot of the set collectors, it seems like it's either like m m not even binders. A lot of times it's usually they're just boxed up and with penny sleeves or whatever, or it's the PSA set registry, or, you know, some of them are going with like CSG now where uh, SGC has a registry also now, but PSA is the main, the main place for the registry. And that's kind of their bread and butter. So if you're building out the X fractors, it seems to be what your focus is, obviously. Um, what would you like? It seems to the average collector nowadays, well, like they buy finest or tops chrome or whatever. Oh, an X Fractor, big deal. That's like a $2 card. But I don't think they understand like how difficult or more rare the X Fractors were back in the day. So talk a little bit about the parallel structure and what you've right. seen in comparison with values, popularity, as opposed to some of the more modern stuff, which I think that's a super confusing thing that like, you know, refractors even back then in those sets were the equivalents of like maybe an out of 99 now, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. The extractors are very rare. I would say they're most equivalent to maybe an out of 50 for today's product in, in a, in a tops product. Um, but yeah, they're super rare. So the, the parallel structure is kind of different to what people are normally used to in tops. Super fractors normally one out of one, but in the, in these sets, the 2006 through 2008 versions, they were actually out of 25. So I know that's another reason a lot of people are right. kind of turned off on these sets are, are the super fractors, same design, same gold foil design, but they're just out of 25 and rubs people the wrong way sometimes. But I think, I think it's great. You just have super fractors, X fractors, refractors, and base. Very simple. Um, Kind of, kind of hard to, to misunderstand. So it, it keeps it keeps it simple for for a young kid like myself when I was collecting these and going forward, going back and just trying to collect all the all the X factors again. I I thought going back and collecting these, it'd be cool to collect all the super factors, but it would be very difficult for them to come by. I think the X factors are kind of in the middle where it's like it's rare, it's very cool to have, it's affordable, and it's it's a very fun hunt. It's been a it's been a fun journey so far. Just trying to all the eBay searches, Com C searches, trying to um, find the find the best condition cards and go after them. So it's been it's been a fun journey so far, and I'm absolutely enjoying these cards. And you said it's affordable. It's affordable now. I th I think at yeah. some point uh, people you know are are going to kind of go backwards and see compare the rarities of things. And you know a lot of a lot of people want to put. Uh, let's take set registry out of it. A lot of people want to put these cards in like, oh, well, it's a pop one. Okay, big deal. But then they're like, well, it's, you know, it's a gold out of 50 because we're, you know, most not talking prism, all the tops gold stuff is typically out of 50. But right. then when they start going backwards in these, I think they're going to understand that these, these are like tr the true rarity of these, even though they're not numbered, they are the equivalents of some of those moderns. So I'm kind of with you. I think if people start going backwards, which they will, because I mean, look at some of the sports card stuff, like uh, specifically in basketball, you're seeing a lot of people go back to the same era that we're talking about in basketball, right. finding X fractors, and you're seeing those prices explode. Meanwhile, the wrestling prices are like even minuscule compared to other wrestling prices, which is like, it's like a value within a value, so to speak on that. So um, yeah. as far as the parallels go, like I, I, I think it's interesting that people, they say, well, Prism has too much, but then they want to look at this set that we're talking about. Oh, this is too little. 
And I'm like, you know, which is it? Like, you know, you can't make everybody happy. I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like it's not, it, it's a, it's kind of a double-edged sword because on one hand it's easier if you're a super collector or if you're a set collector to kind of build out these master collections, eventually, you know, you've got more of a shot to do it because if you need the super fractor, there's at least 25 as opposed to just having one of one. Right. And on the flip side, it's like, well, I can only chase after so much, but it seems like this is a set that um, maybe people are more set collecting with this. Again, that seems to be something that I'm kind of talking to more people that are going back and starting to just complete sets, whether it's for the set registry or just for themselves. So is that something that I like, have you interacted with a lot of people that are also collecting these or is it mainly just you out there? Um, I've seen I've seen a couple people on Twitter post um, some of these cards. Um, I know Jamie Wallace is is one that I've seen post big cards with the, with the Rock and a few others. But really, I haven't seen too too much too much noise around these. But um, I believe it's Brett McGrath says zig when others zag, and I really sure. think that I really think that this this set has potential to appreciate over time, and I just really enjoyed them to begin with. So I think it was just a no brainer for me to kind of go down this road and set collect. And, and with Prism, I think it's, it's been great to get a lot of, a lot of eyes on, on the wrestling card community in general. Um, a lot of these people are going to go back and see, okay, what was the, what was the first Chrome cards? You're going to go back and see the Chromium cards with comic images and then you're going to see Topps Chrome heritage. So I think over time, there's going to be a lot more eyeballs on not just this set, but um, our community in general. Something else about uh, completing your registry that you're that you're going to hopefully be working on, which I, I've heard PSA on numerous sports card podcasts say we are going to get back to right. the bulk because, you know, there's people out there that are like, oh, we're never going to see it again. And I'm like, well, the, they've actually already said they're going to bring it back because they understand base set collectors and the registry and how valuable that is to collectors. So something that could get interesting though, is if you're building this out and all of a sudden people start seeing that there's a groundswell possibly behind uh, set collecting in the registry. And with this card, you know, we see people out there doing the sending in the rock or Steve Austin or Ric Flair, what, you know, Hogan, the bigger names, and they're getting them slabbed. And all of a sudden, like, there could be bidding wars because there might only be a few of them graded to go into this registry. So that could be something interesting. Are you, are you fully prepared to start uh, wheeling and dealing and outbidding people to get this thing done? That's why I'm trying to get ahead of the curve while I can. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I think, I think that's definitely a possibility going forward, especially PSA, like you said, has said that they're, they're wanting to bring those prices down, I believe as far as $20 right. uh, eventually. So I think that that's just a, a great, Great thing for the hobby in general, especially for, for set collectors like myself. So as far as completing this, how much how much of the set do you do you have it completed already and you're just trying to grade it? Uh, are you missing some cards? How much of this collection is actually your original collection from when you were a kid starting? Talk a little bit about what you currently have. That's a great question. So there's 99 cards in, in the checklist. So that's base. Refractor, X Fractor, Super Fractor. So I'm only going after the X Fractors. And I have currently, I think I have 70. And I think from, from my binder from back in 2007, I think I only had five X Fractors. So this has been a definitely a work in progress. Um, definitely a fun journey to, to track these down and um, make deals. And one of the underrated things that, that I've found along the way is just making relationships with sellers who yeah. just have a lot of these and like just working out deals like, hey, like I've got these from you in the past, get a good relationship with the seller and get good deals on them. That's been something I didn't expect, but was very happy to see along the way. Yeah. And it, it eventually can potentially lead to other deals. If you start doing those, like I've, I've built so many relationships through just the content or doing, you know, a, a basic trade or an eBay sale or something like that, that all of a sudden leads you down this other path that, you know, we see it in sports cards, but I just don't think it's the same. It's not as a cohesive. I mean, obviously we're going to have some infighting and disagreements, which is fine. You know, we don't all have to get along, but the fact that right. there's so many people that can help each other, like complete those collections and not have egos about it is something that's really good. Speaking of completing and egos, is there anything out there that you're looking for to complete this set that you just can't seem to find? 
Um, there's a few big ones still on my list, but um, most of my list still is of like lower and mid tier um, cards. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I'm confident they'll they'll show up eventually. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to rush it. I'm trying to enjoy the enjoy the ride and and get there. But yeah, once I hit once I hit the full 99, I'm gonna be contemplating whether I send in fifty dollars a card to PSA, and I don't want to have to make that decision just yet. So yeah. I'm taking my time. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that are kind of you know they've got those cards that aren't quite that threshold to send in the fifty or even the hundred. And they're just waiting for those prices to come down. And then it'll be interesting to see what happens. So as you're kind of building this out, as you started going through, you know, taking your childhood collection, adding to it, piecing it together to hopefully become this set registry, what is something, I mean, you've mentioned a lot of good stuff already, but what is something that you've learned throughout the process that maybe helped you in the hobby or something that could help somebody in general that you've learned as you started this whole project? I think when it comes down to it, just collect what you like. I started out collecting Zion and Ja, um, ja Morant cards um, when I first got back into collecting. And you know what? That's not really what I wanted to collect. I just kind of bought into the, the hype and wrote that and just kind of regret it. So I don't want anybody to, to regret buying, getting into any sort of hype. Like, I don't want anybody to see this and think that they should go out and buy 2007 X-Factors. Sure. I want them to see that... Go out and buy what resonates with you, what makes you feel like you enjoy these cards, you connect with these cards, and just enjoy the, the card collecting process as a whole. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of hype behind Prism. There's a lot of hype behind AEW. If that's not your thing, don't collect it. Collect what you like. If you watch New Japan, go out and see what New Japan cards are out there. If you like GCW, go out and see what indie cards are out there. So just... Find your own path and make your way through it. Reach out to, there's a lot of great resources in this hobby on Twitter and Facebook. Um, make friends, make relationships. You never know who may have the card you're looking for. Um, and you may have a card that, that they need as well. So don't be afraid to make deals. Um, don't be married to anything if it's not your, good one. your collection. Um, there's a lot of cards where I'm like, I really like this card, but it's not my goal right now. And right. sometimes it means letting it go. You might get it back later. Um, let it go now. Chase your goals, what your current goals are. And then if you need to, revisit it and go from there. You, you just opened up some more topics I got to talk about. Like that, I, I was, <laughs> we were about to close and then you just opened up some more. So uh, I talk a lot about the stories behind the cards. And I think that's awesome that here you're, again, and we've already mentioned taking your childhood passion and part of your actual collection and then bringing it forward adding to it and then pushing that even forward and the story behind the card you're not doing this because you think this set is going to blow up and you're going to be a millionaire you're doing it because that's what you started with that's what you're interested in and that's what you're going to keep going forward with something that like I even struggle with this sometimes and I'm sure there's others out there that do is when you said don't be married to something like I 100% agree but sometimes it's tough when you have a Roman Reigns or a Steve Austin or something like that and you're like I know I should hold on to this, but if I get rid of it, it can help fund this other thing that I like, even though like the monetary value might not be there. What what is going through your pro what's going through your head during that process? Because I, mean, I it's I, tough. Yeah, I'm that way too. Like current, like two right now, currently, wrestling all stars, 1982 and 83. That's my thing. And it, I don't care about like obviously the value. Sure, it's great, right? But the thing is, yeah. like, I get just as excited about the Matt Bourne card or the Steve Kern or the um you know, Jesse Ventura or Austin Idol. Like I love, side note, I love all the Memphis wrestling guys in there, but yeah, it's like all these oddball guys. I, I get just as excited to try to get those autographed and complete the set. And add, you, you know, it's the same process you're talking with. Yeah. And so I'm sitting here with like a Roman Reigns or an Austin Theory. And I'm like, man, I know this is a rare card, but if I let it go, it could fund these other things. Is there like, is there any kind of uh, advice you can give as far as like walking through that mental process to help people? Because as you know, and I've talked about on this channel many times, it's like, you got to let things go to kind of build the community, but also you can benefit from that too. And it's a tough hurdle for a lot of people to get over, especially, I say it all the time, the ones in the traditional wrestling card bubble where it's just always been buying everything and, you know, keep it instead of get letting things go to fund other things and having a focus. I know I talked a lot about that just now. A lot thrown at you, but what do you got to say? 
No, I, I'm fully with you. It's a, definitely a tough decision. It's just a, a mental decision you have to to kind of make at some point. I'm I'm with you. I'm I invest in the Rock and Roman, and sometimes you just gotta let those go to to pursue your current goals. And um, you gotta set a budget. I think it's very important to set a budget because it's easy to get out of hand. Um, but if you gotta let one go to fund what you're currently doing. Um, you just gotta you just gotta roll with it and hope hope you can get it back later down the road. But definitely a, a tough mental decision that <laughs> you gotta make sometimes. It's yeah, I'm with you. I've had to make that decision a couple times and it's not fun, but sometimes you just gotta you gotta do what you know, like what makes you happy and what uh, what you're looking for. So like this Undertaker wasn't cheap, but sometimes you gotta you gotta let other stuff go to to pay for your undertaker so well and like uh, i can ask you the one thing i like to look at is okay if this is something and i've talked about this before so i'm, I'm repeating myself but you know sometimes people watching you gotta just repeat repetitive persistence to get them to think a certain way one thing i like to do is like okay i have this card i want to you know i could potentially sell it to fund other things go on ebay look around if you're not seeing one then you probably shouldn't sell it to be honest like unless you just run a really cash in if, if you're if you're that if it's that important to you and you're not seeing a lot of them you're probably not going to be able to get it back at a decent price that being right. said if you're seeing a lot of them out there for varying prices then it's not really maybe that rare of a card and you could potentially get it back down the road if you really wanted it or it might be just you know something to move on that you're just not as interested anymore so that being said hypothetically let's say you get this set registry completed you've got this whole thing done what what are you going to do with it then? Is this like PC for life? Is this something you could potentially see yourself moving on from eventually? Or like, what's your plans with this? Because like, I could tell you right now, the the 82, all, 82 83 All-Stars, like I, that would be the last thing I ever sell because I just love the set. And I'm not even a set collector, but I found myself like building onto this thing and then get, you know, it's not, the regular cards just aren't good enough anymore. Then I got to get the autographs. Then I got to get it to PSA. Then I got to, you know, you know how it goes. Right. I got to say right now, as of today, I think it's PC for life, but you never know how circumstances change down the road. But one of my biggest things is I'm invest I'm, I'm investing in these cards, not to flip, but I think they're at least going to hold their value. Yeah, I really think they're going to appreciate, but I want to invest in something that I think I will at least hold their value. And I think with, with these early tops Chrome sets, I think it's definitely, definitely a good case scenario to, to put, put my money in so but to answer your question right now i would i'm pc in for life i love this set it brings me back to the ruthless aggression era i'm i know i'm probably one of the only people you've talked to who grew up in in, in the yeah. ruthless aggression era but yeah because a lot of people like the okay let's let's hypothetically say like 2000 I don't know, 15 or 16 backwards. It's like, there's so many cards that are, that are pr prior to that, that people are just now discovering and being like, I didn't know this existed. And I didn't know this existed. And here's, here you are like, you're like, I know all this stuff. Cause this is what I started with. I just think it's an amazing story that you've got behind that. Right. I'm going to blow your mind. So my first memory of Rowdy Roddy Piper is with him paired up with Sean O'Hare and they were in yep. a, a, a feud with Mr. America so that that's that was my first introduction to Roddy Piper. I know that's that's kind of absurd to some people, but that's just how oh, it is. And that card can take you right back to that memory. And that's what I just keep telling people. Like it's cool to have the cards that are worth a lot, and but sometimes it's even cooler to have the card that's worth a dollar that can, you know, bring you back to that moment, tell that story. And then here you are, you're taking kind of both worlds. You're taking a, an undervalued card set that I agree with you probably will eventually go up in time, if not hold the value. And you're merging it with your past story and just the memories of those specific talents. I think it's amazing. And I'm hoping that, you know, we see more people in wrestling cards doing that, or I, like, I know for a fact, there are people out there doing that and they're just not talking about it. So maybe we can get more people talking about that kind of stuff. Right. I think going down, I know a lot of people do player sets or player yeah. collecting, and that's really cool. I've, I've collected a lot of rock and Roman, but um, I think set, set collecting and wrestling has been really fun so far. I've really been enjoying kind of going through and reliving some of these memories and seeing, oh, the boogeyman. I remember when he yeah. tore in 
and Booker T and Queen Charmel and just going going through all these cards it's like I remember that guy he was in a he's kind of in a lower tier storyline but you still remember him so um, I think that's important too when, when collecting cards it's just having those memories and something that you connect with last question do you think we've talked a lot about the set collecting in the registry do you think this is something that uh, specifically within wrestling cards we could see exploding when PSA gets back because um, that you know the All Stars registry is kind of iconic with some legendary people within the hobby's names in that. But there's some other sets. You know, I'm sure uh, some of us have heard me and Tony talk about like uh, you know maybe the WCW Impel set would be a crazy yeah. set registry to put together. Um, and there's all different kinds of like interesting ways you could do it. It's it's a little bit of a competition, which is kind of fun. But also what you just said is something that maybe I'm not thinking about per se. And that's how a set can tell you of all these memories instead of just going for kind of the big names or what's most valuable. So do you see set collecting as far as not just the set collecting we've seen in years past, but the set registry? Do you see that kind of going up or what, what do you think is going to happen with that in wrestling cards? Um, I think the set registry oh, is very. Let me dependent. also say. Let me say also too, because the caveat is there's a lot of anti graders in wrestling, but yeah, that that's is true. A, that's a cool project you can start. So I don't know. Right. My yeah. So that's that's one thing that set registry has kind of going against it for wrestling cards, but um, for modern stuff, it'd be very tough, especially with Panini, how yeah. there's so many parallels. But I think for for other sets. Previous sets, like you mentioned, WCW Impel, that would be really cool to, to put that together. Um, I think I would see more so of player collecting continuing and, and going up. I know there's a lot of like Rock, Andre, Hogan, a um, lot, of, lot of player set registries out there. Mm -hmm. I think it would be cool to see a lot of like rookies, like it would be cool to see a, a Braun Breaker player set start and yeah. see people collect the, the prism and all the cards that come after. So I think, I think that would be more likely than, than set, um, set collecting in, in wrestling, but still like, I think it's cool for anybody to, to kind of go down a path and carve, carve their own way of what, how they yeah. collect, because there's no set way of how to collect. There's no rules to this. It's just what you like and what you think is best for you. Right. I mean, again, look what David Peck and Rob England started way way back when they were the first ones doing the set registry and grading the all-stars and everyone laughed at them and now right. people are like even in the sports card world people are seeing what they've put together and what they've built and established and they're just like you know we're not worthy of your collection so never never be afraid to be the comp and never be afraid to start something exactly. new if that's what you truly believe in so man what a great chat thank you for all the information yeah. you've given us on this set and we will have the link in the show notes to your profile, but let everybody know where they can find you and anything else you got going on you want to promote. Yeah, you can find me at RealJDC on most platforms. Uh, Twitter is where I post all my card content. So feel free to, to tweet at me and I'd be glad to talk wrestling cards with you all day. Awesome. Thanks again for your time and thank you guys for watching. Thanks again to Joey Charles for coming on the show today and talking about some of these cards that he's really into, why he likes them so much, why he collects them. Again, the running theme here that I've been really pushing in the past probably six months, stories behind the cards. To talk about these cards a little bit as well, I'm also a huge fan of the 0607 Chrome Heritage sets. They have a little bit of a cult following. You see people talk about them, but they just don't get the hype that many of the other Chrome products get. And I think it's interesting that people don't look at these cards because either it's got that heritage word in there, so Chrome, Heritage. Oh, well, it's not officially Topps Chrome, even though they have the Topps Chrome logo on it. But the other thing is a lot of people don't like this set or don't gravitate to it because there's no gold. And that seems to be kind of the, uh, I'll just say group think that's been going on, you know, and it's everything. People go after gold. They want everything gold. So gold prism, gold chrome, none of that in the Heritage set. But again, there's great cards, especially the Super Fractors. And it is a change of pace to see a smaller set of parallels. It's easier to complete a rainbow. But again, I guess different tastes and different mindsets within the hobby is really what makes all of this go around. If you enjoyed today's video and it brought you some value, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and share this with a friend. Again, I said at the top of the show, trying to get to 1,000 subs at the time of this recording. And that's the free, easy way to help get there. Spread the word. Tell somebody about this channel and hopefully these videos will just help people 
continue to go down the rabbit hole of wrestling cards. And make sure to check out the show notes. I've got Joey Charles contact information down there. You can check him out on Instagram or Twitter. And you can find all the links to everything that I'm involved with, all the ways you can help show your support. And until next time, click the videos on the screen for more great wrestling card content, and I will see you there.